Right, good morning everybody. Welcome to the channel, I'm Edie Wilmot. And today we have the privilege of test riding this beautiful Suzuki Vistron 1050. It's from Two Wheel Centre, who are our local Suzuki dealers at Mansfield Woodhouse. And they've very, very kindly allowed us the privilege of taking some of their bikes out. Okay, so join me after the intro and we'll tell you all about it. Hi everybody. Well, as you can see, we're just showing the TFT dash. I don't think it's a TFT dash actually. I think it's just a digital dash. And I'd like to thank Tool Centre yet again for um, lending us the the strum. Now, uh, first impressions is literally just jumped on the bike. Never ridden a, an adventure bike before, and these are the, my first impressions of getting on it. The clutch on the v strum is very, very light, exceptionally light. It, uh, uh, I just found it really, it was the same as the Hayabusa, so somehow Suzuki have managed to make the clutches extremely, extremely soft. Well done Suzuki for that. Also the brakes on the v strum are absolutely superb. Uh, I can only say that, uh, uh, well, I've, um, the Hayabusa brakes were absolutely amazing and the V-Strom seemed to be matching it as well so again well done Suzuki on that fit and finish on the V-Strom I think for an adventure bike it looks very nice I uh, would quite consider um, looking at one of these in the future having said that uh, towards the end of the video it becomes quite clear it wouldn't really suit us but that's no detriment towards the bike itself right the engine on the V-Strom it is superb absolutely superb it's um, smooth very very smooth tractable no vibes coming from it considering it's a v-twin i would have expected to see vibes or expected to feel vibes coming from it there's nothing like that at all it just absolutely smooth smooth sm smooth, smooth can be for a v-twin low revs high gears didn't seem to bother it obviously if you gave it a fistful it's not going to go it would it would bog down a little bit but if you just if you use your common sense and use your gearbox it's got no issues at all in the real world there's plenty enough power for what anybody needs on the road one of the things i've been I've been watching on the YouTube channels is people complaining that the ABS doesn't switch off. Well, yeah, if you want to take this off-road and you are looking at an off-road bike, don't be looking at this one. This is not an out-and-out off-road, on-road bike. It will go on a, a gravel car park or anything like that happily, but I wouldn't expect it to go on um, a dirt track and deep muck and rock and everything. I'm sure it will do it in the hands of the people that can handle it. But one of the people that has turned around and been on YouTube and said that the, it's not an issue that the ABS doesn't turn off. You just don't lift up the seat, you find the fuse that controls the ABS, and you switch it off. You pull it out, sorry. And that switches the ABS off, and now you can go off-road, do what you want to do. As soon as you get back on road, then obviously you can uh, put, the put the fuse back in. Some of the first impressions on the bike. Simple. Um, it's very, very comfortable to sit on in the riding position. It's just like sitting in a chair or anything else. It's really, 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 really comfortable. Uh, the throttle response is absolutely superb. The fly-by wire throttle that they fitted to this bike is absolutely excellent. Um, from all accounts, from what I can gather, having not ridden the older model, but people talking about the older model, it smoothed out the throttle response. There's no jerkiness in it through town, uh, lower gears or anything like that. Nothing at all. It just sweet as sweet could be like i say for a v-twin can't believe it mirrors mirrors are absolutely fantastic plenty of view through them plenty of adjustments on them no problem at all standing up i'm standing up now uh, on the pegs and you can hold the tank quite easily with your knees uh, again you can take your hands off the handlebars and ride it in and it's absolutely fantastic okay now down to wind protection with the screen in the highest position for me i'm just just around six foot I found that uh, the wind protection was excellent, absolutely excellent. I was um, not buffeted around at all or anything like that, so I find that as an absolutely fantastic plus for the V-Strom. And like I say, seating and smoothness and everything else, 
What the V-Strom gave me was a lot of confidence. I was only on it a couple of minutes and I felt so confident with the bike. And that takes a lot. That's, that's the sign of a really well-balanced bike. At very low speeds, it's very well-balanced. So when you're coming up to travel ice and everything, you literally get it down to one mile an hour before you even think about putting your feet down. Very well done, Suzuki, with all the design features on it. Uh, very impressed with it, to be honest with you. Handling, handling, I found absolutely superb. It falls into the corners with great ease. Uh, and it gives you no impressions that it's going to wash out or anything. So I found it very, very planted. Um, to be honest with you, it's not uh, the sort of thing I'm used to anyway, so I can't really comment on what the adventure bikes are like. But I do find that the v Strom is very, very comfortable. And yeah, I was I was quite taken back by it. I didn't think I would like it, being used to more sportier machines, but I am very impressed. This uh, v strom has got the one-touch start on it. This one's also the um, higher spec version. It's got the cruise control and uh, cornering ABS and things like that. Lean angle ABS, sorry. Not so sure I'd pay the extra money for all those things. Not something I would probably ever use. Most of the electronics I don't think I've ever used on any of my bikes. I don't try to get into the position where I need them. If you are a hard, fast, tight rider, then yeah, you're going to need them. And you're going to enjoy them. They'll be there for you to use. I know a lot of people who, who ride on the ABS on their bikes. And yeah, they outbreak me and outcorner me. But I'm quite happy to ride the way I ride. Vibration is certainly something I didn't notice at all. I know the pegs have got rubbers on them. Um, and like I say, there's no vibration through the mirrors from the engine, there's no vibration through your feet or anything. When you start to push the engine a little bit, it does start to vibrate a little bit, but then I would have expected that anyway. But nothing that you would, well, it was quite, it was quite a nice feeling actually. I would I class it as a, a bit of characteristic for the bike. So that, I think that's excellent. So my very first impressions on the bike, after I've been on it just a couple of minutes, was it was, it felt secure, it made me feel confident. I found that I was going around corners without even thinking about it. It didn't feel like it was going to wash or anything. After having ridden the bike for about 45, 50 miles, nothing really changed. Um, I wouldn't say that this is going to give you a massive smile factor, although it has got plenty of power for overtaking. And the beauty of that is when you want to get that power out, you do have to use the gearbox. And I think that's a great thing. That's what motorcycling is all about. Like with the booster, you jump on the booster, open the throttle, it's gone. Don't matter what gear you're in, you don't have to think about changing gear or anything. On this, you want to overtake, it's a good idea to knock it down a couple of gears, and again, it's gone. But you do need to, to ride it like a rider. I did notice uh, on a standstill that the pegs are in the way. <laughs> you put your feet down and the pegs are there. I found that quite strange but then again the pegs are in a position that when you sat on the bike they're very easy to access and you are comfortable on it but i would have thought for move maneuverability and everything that would have been a problem having said that i found myself going down a, a cul-de-sac and i had to do a turn around at the bottom um, on two occasions actually i was doing a, a little bit of finding some roads i didn't know on the first occasion i paddled it round, and it wasn't a problem because the pegs flick up they just flicked up out of the way. And on the other uh, particular time I did a U-turn, I did it using the bike um, steering and the steering amount of lock on it was absolutely brilliant. I turned the bike around very, very easily in a very, very small space compared to what I'm used to. The screen, the screen is adjustable. Um, I've had seen quite a few videos where they complain about the adjustments on the screen being on the outside. And yes, it is on the outside. But for me, I would have just adjusted it to the top setting and that would do me nicely i wouldn't have wanted to think about changing it i've never moved the screen up and down before so it's not been an issue wouldn't have been an issue to me i don't really know why you'd want to adjust the screen up and down while you're riding i thought you just adjust it for your height and lock it in place which is exactly what i did maybe you can comment on that to tell me why i would want to adjust it on the fly i'm sure um there would is a very good reason that i don't think i've ever found it yet one of the questions I do get asked is would I actually spend my money on one of these? And the answer to that is it depends on, on what you're looking at. If I was going to be looking at buying um, the V-Strom, at the moment two wheels has got a very good deal on. There's one in there at the moment without all the electronics on it and they want 9.2 for it. It's in the grey, it looks absolutely stunning. Would I buy that bike? Yeah, 
Would I spend another twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred pound on all the extra electronics? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't buy. I wouldn't go and spend eleven and a half thousand pound on this. Uh, I would definitely consider the the, the bit more basic model uh, at the moment. Two wheel centre. They've got um, a basic model on a pre registration. They're asking nine thousand two hundred pound for that. I think for nine thousand two hundred pound for a brand new bike that's not even been started yet. It's an absolute bargain. So, yeah, I would have considered it, only, unfortunately, from an appealing point of view, as you'll see later in the video, it doesn't work for us. And it's, it's just a shame, really, because I think it's an absolute stunning bike. One of the things that a lot of the videos never, ever tell you is the fuel consumption. And when I tried to look it up, I found an internet site that said that the V-Strom did 40 to the gallon on average. Um, the... The machine I'm riding at the moment is showing fuel consumption, sorry, fuel consumption average as 53.4. And at the end of my riding on it, and I didn't particularly take it too steady. Um, I did use the power and I did use the full response of it. And at the end of it, it was showing 57.2 to the gallon as an average fuel consumption. And I think that's absolutely excellent. So it's even going to be cheap to run on fuel. So, what a bargain this bike is turning out to be. If you're considering to buy one of these, I'm sure you'll be quite well aware to be able to go onto the internet to find out all the stats and everything else. It's up about seven brake horsepower on the last model. Having not ridden the last model, I can't really comment um, whether it's better, worse or indifferent. That's only something that somebody who's probably lived with the last model will know, jump on this and then they'll be able to tell the difference for you. The seat, um, I found a lot of people on the internet were complaining it was hard. I didn't find it hard at all. I find it comfortable. It's certainly not soft, but it's certainly not hard either. I think a lot of the cases, it depends on what bike you're coming to from the, or going onto this from. Me, I try to keep an open mind. Every bike we ride and every bike we review, we try to make sure that we just keep as open a mind as possible. Um, so we just take it on face value of what the actual bike is and what it is capable of doing. And the thing I found with this was I found it extremely comfortable. I didn't find the seat hard. I didn't find it soft. I just found it completely adequate for all your needs. Handling. We've touched on the handling already a little bit, um, but I found it excellent. It drops into corners superbly. There's been video footage on YouTube again of the people that have reviewed this bike, and they've literally dropped it onto from peg to peg. There's no problem doing that at all. It's very, very easy to do. It floats into corners, it drives around them, and the beautiful engine being so smooth, it doesn't give you any thoughts that anything untoward is going to happen. So, to be honest with you, this is something very, very, very special. For an adventure bike anyway, and like I said, I've not driven any, ridden, sorry, ridden any of the others, so I can't really comment on what they're like and what they're not like. But I do realise that with this, if you... If it's off-roading you want, then there are better options. But for you want an adventure bike, feel on the road. This is superb. Other video um, YouTubers have complained that the gearbox has been very clunky. This one wasn't. Whether they just happened to get a bad bike, I don't know, with a bad box. This box was absolutely typical Suzuki Silky Smooth. Slid into every single gear. And like I've already mentioned as well, the clutch is so light. I could ride this all day long without any trouble at all. You can go down your little country lanes where you're down to 20 mile an hour and it'll potter through lovely. Or you can put it on the motorway and I'm sure it'll cruise at any speed you particularly want it to, especially if excess of 100 mile an hour. Of course, I didn't try that, but uh, I'm 100% I'm sure this engine's got plenty of punch to do that for you. I'm sure it's got plenty of punch for two up, full luggage, take it to the south of France, and when you get there, go around all the lovely twisty mountain roads with absolute full enjoyment. As you can see me go around this bend, this sorry, this roundabout, it's absolutely superb. It just floats in and floats out without any problem at all. I really, really enjoyed riding this bike. And if you're thinking about one of these or an adventure bike, you should make sure you go and test ride. Okay, everybody. Well, we've uh, taken it for a little ride and um, we found out what we what we think about it. Uh, from my point of view, it's it's quite a nice ride. It's a nice bike. So let's bring Teresa in and see what she thinks of it as a pillion. Come on in, Teresa. Hello. So uh, you're not impressed, are you? Um, not really. No. Um, it's 
the, the seat's massive, but when you actually get on it, um, they sit right at the back. So, so. The seat. So, I'm sat here. My yeah. mum's here. Um, because she sat right. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird position. Okay. Your feet are there and your bum's back. So right. you like chopper position. Like the old push bike chopper. Try to pull a wheelie. Yeah, a bit like the um what Gav's got. Um them kind of cruisers, like, yeah. Cruisers type of things. Right? Okay. And you can't see either, can you? No, unfortunately no. Okay. But my helmet's less noisy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so good and bad. Yeah. It's comfortable. It's comfortable. But it's not for us because obviously you can't see. It's awkward to get on. Mm. I've also noticed that the, the pegs on the bike, the front pegs when you go to put your feet down, they're kind of in your way. It's really strange. It's like they're so far forward that where you put your feet down, that's where the pegs are. Having said that, it's a very comfortable riding position. So summing up, it's, um, it's a nice bike, smooth, very smooth, brakes are brilliant, it's not really vibey, it's certainly not good for a pillion if they want to be able to see, and, uh, and we'll just take it back and say thank you for lending it to us. Thank you very much for watching the channel, please subscribe, please hit the bell so you get to learn about future videos, well thank you very much for watching, take care everybody, look after yourselves, bye bye.